Howdy folks, Captain315 here. This is going to be our second installment in the Porting 101. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and go ahead and tear off another quick video here. Uh, this one is going to be dedicated to the flow bench itself. Um, this one, I think we'll go ahead and call it a comparison flow bench because it's not one of these $10,000 pieces of equipment that's going to tell you how much air you are actually getting through your engine, but it will compare as you make changes to whether or not you've improved or hurt the engine itself. So we can't get actual numbers. This is for comparison only. Uh, you will establish a baseline and then you will go from there and I'll show you how it works. So what we have here, for all intents and purposes, is a flow bench. This is a YouTube, no pun intended, a YouTube manometer. Uh, you, you scientists use this stuff all the time, but we're not gonna go there. I basically took it, put a tube in it with a little red dye, and screwed an old yardstick to it so I can record numbers. Now this tube is open at one end, it has a loop, and I put enough water in it to start pretty close to zero. Okay, the other end of this tube goes over here, threads into a fitting in the spark plug hole. Okay, yep, for your vacuum, that's all it is. Old stinking shop vac that's been laying around. Okay, got an adapter on it, piece of PVC pipe. I took this here, it's just a reducer bushing, and cut a small taper on it. Now, depending on the cylinder size, the bore size, of your engine is going to determine what you've got to use for that okay and it's just got a little 90 on it okay so this will go in the bottom of the cylinder like so and fit tight very very important to not have any air leaks in any of this part of the system or it'll screw your numbers up so keep that in mind let's go ahead and set this up and we'll pull some numbers and do a quick comparison. Okay, folks, everything is set up. Cylinder head is on with a gasket. No, you do not need all of your cylinder head bolts in there. Just spread out, you know, three or four of them and snug them down good and you're, you're fine. You don't need torque wrenches and all that kind of crap, okay? We got our fitting in there. Plastic fitting actually works really well. Uh, it's just a quarter pipe fitting. Uh, it's plastic, you thread it in there two or three times, you're not gonna have any air leaks there. Okay, and we've got our tube hooked up. Um, in this case, I actually liked, um, I tried it with a 3 8 OD tube, and it seemed to work a little bit better with this small, like uh, 3 16 OD tube. Um, my thought was, and I don't know this because I'm not a scientist, but that the smaller tube would be more sensitive to changes as it's not trying to pick up a gigantic column of liquid. Okay, so if you're following along with that, now something you gotta keep in mind, and it's the reason for this big loop, it all depends on where you wanna start your readings at. I wanna be able to start a ton of readings and pull and you know be able to check as we'll get into that. I'll show you where you actually check at uh, different increments of valve lift um, so you can see how much air you're flowing at low lift which is where your torque is and at high lift where is your maximum airflow is um, so you have to make sure that you have enough liquid in a tube that it could pull all the way up to the top if necessary without picking up an air bubble because then your results are screwed up sorry <laughs> okay so for this in this case here um, what you, what you would end up doing um, is opening your valve, taking measurements. It doesn't matter what you put in there. I use these metal shims that are 50 thousandths a piece. Um, in this case, we're just going to flow and we're going to compare the ported engine versus the unported stock engine at 370 thousandths lift. Why 370? Because that's what that ended up to. Okay. Um, that's pretty close to about the maximum amount of lift you can get out of these engines. Um, 
so right now everything is set up we've got the valve open to 370 now to do this correctly if you're flowing a port you should actually take and have a, a radius uh, some kind of a radius here because this can disrupt the flow on the edges um, and actually uh, screw up your numbers uh, a lot of times you can even use play-doh or dum-dum and just put a little radius on this and have something that lays out a little bit you don't want that sharp turn interfering with the amount of potential airflow. Now at the same time, if we're going back to back comparisons, ported versus unported, and we're not using a nice radius on there for either one, it doesn't really make a difference. You, you, anything you do to one, you want to do to the other. If you're making changes, you establish a baseline without having a radius on here. Just make sure that you follow that all the way through and don't use a radius at all, which is what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and turn the vacuum cleaner on and we're gonna pull a number at 370 lift on a bone stock 20.5 oppie with a stock head gasket. see that that stabilized pretty much at about nine and five eighths. All right, I'll be right back. We'll go ahead and try the ported one. Okay, we've got the ported and relieved and unshrouded block up on here now. We're set at 370 thousandths. Shop vac is hooked up. Still got our baseline at about 0.5. Now, if you remember, we were, what were we, about nine and five eighths, almost nine and three quarters. Let's see what this one does. We're just a tick under six on that. If you were to take six and divide it by 9.75, well, I'm not gonna do that right now, but six divided by nine is a 33% increase. So we're probably looking at a 40% increase in airflow. Now, hang on, I will explain to you how this works. So how this works, how this porting works, uh, basically your vacuum source, in this case, a shop vac is pulling X amount of air. It is trying to suck air through the vacuum cleaner. The problem is, is the valve and the port is a restriction. Uh, it's driving me nuts because I'm watching myself here, but the camera's over here, so I look all jacked up. Bear with me. Uh, so we're taking our reference from the spark plug hole because it's making a vacuum in the cylinder trying to pull air through this port. Okay, well, what's going to happen if we were to put our hand over this, the vacuum is going to suck harder on this tube, correct? Which is going to make the numbers read higher on the manometer. If we open the valve further or we take our hand off of this, the number is going to read lower. It would go all the way to a point if the vacuum cleaner was maxed out and this port was that big around, the reading would be almost zero, which is 100% flow. And again, this doesn't tell us what a an actual professional flow bench would tell us, which is the actual cubic feet per minute. Now, if we had an actual CFM number, we could determine exactly how much power this engine is gonna make within about 10% just by how much air it's moving. Now, if you do that, you have to actually attach the intake manifold, the carburetor at wide open, and then take this to the peak valve lift of whatever your cam is going to open that valve at. That will work across the board, and you will be within, you could guess your engine within half a horsepower by doing that. Again, with a comparison style flow bench, we don't get an actual CFM number. All we know is it's flowing 10% better, it's 5% worse. It's a great comparison. You could actually leave this on here since it's a shop vac to suck up your shavings. You can go in here and if you're working in the port itself and not up near the valve, leave it right together. Get your tool out, get your die grinder, 
turned it back on again. And if you were at 10 and now you're at 9.5, you're going the right way. You go over on this side, take a little out, oops, 9.8, okay, don't do that. That's not a bad idea when you get to that point. If you, had, if you were serious about this, get a junk block like I did here because I definitely made some mistakes in here or these numbers would be probably closer to five instead of six. Uh, I found a couple things that it absolutely did not like. Uh, if you do that with your good block, you just ruined it. So we will apply those things that were learned on this one to the 20.5 and I will actually do the porting on that and we will follow along in a video in one of the future series. That's a wrap folks. Hope you enjoy. Stay tuned for the next one.